We've now got a fresh installation of the API platform up and running. And as already mentioned, the API platform is very much a full featured stack. So it stands to reason that out of the box, we'll have various routes or endpoints that we can start playing with. Now, as also mentioned, whilst the API platform is a Symfony project, it doesn't use MVC or model view controller. Instead, it makes use of the ADR design pattern, action domain responder, and this may throw you. So where normally you may head to the source controllers directory, here you'll just find a .git ignore file. Likewise, looking at the config roots.yaml file, you're going to find a single entry in there, but it's commented out. There are a few other files here that you may think to check, but if you haven't given the documentation a once over, and you're just sort of playing around for the first time, you may be scratching your head at this point. Well, regardless of how a project's routing is configured, we can always check out the router just like in any other Symfony project. And we can do that via the CLI. Now, as Docker is involved, this does add a layer of extra complexity to proceedings. I'm running a Docker PS-A here to see all the different Docker containers that are up and running. The output is really messy because I've got very little screen real estate to work with. On your own computer, this should be a lot nicer. Even so, there are a lot of containers that are brought up as part of running the API platform. It's actually the PHP one that we want because that is where, unsurprisingly, all our PHP code is going to run from. So we're going to look at a couple of ways to address this problem, where the problem being is that we want to get the output of a Bing console debug router. But we need to get that output from the running PHP Docker container. I'm going to run the command docker compose exec which will allow me to execute commands inside a running container. In this case, I want to execute a command inside the PHP container. And the command that I want to execute uses PHP, which is why we have PHP firstly as the container name, and then PHP again being the binary inside that container that we want to use, and then the typical bin console debug router command. And for clarity, we execute that command against the PHP container because that's the name of the service inside our Docker Compose YAML file. Now executing commands in this way is not actually my preferred approach. I prefer to use a shell inside the running container. Doing this is fairly straightforward. We just need to exec another command against the PHP container, but this time it's a bin sh. In doing so, we'll get inside our container. And just as a heads up, you can exit from this container anytime, just type exit. But the nice thing about doing this is that you can just work as you typically would without really needing to think about being inside a container. So whichever method you prefer, the next interesting thing to look at is the output of this debug router. And we can see that we have a bunch of routes that already exist. The API underscore entry point is all about discovering your new API. So whether you are you, as in the person who just created this brand new API platform instance, or you're a person from the internet accessing this interesting looking system for the first time, you need a way to discover all the available resources that this API offers. The thing is, humans are really just part of the equation. One super nice and maybe not so immediately obvious point is that our new API is auto discoverable by computers. All this extra data helps consumers of our API better understand just what the heck we are intending to share and also how to find their way around once inside our API. So we're going to start with the entry point and the entry point as in the API underscore entry point route is the intended starting point. And in our case, and by default, it's the root of our API. Both the index and the format placeholders are optional. In other words, if we don't provide them, then the default root is just going to be a slash. Now, whilst the index placeholder is optional, if you do want to use it, then the value must be index. In other words, you must use slash index dot some format. You can't just use whatever dot whatever format you like. And given that the available formats are currently JSON-LD, JSON and HTML, this means that the variations of the entry point are either index.json-ld, index.json, or index.html. So for clarity, if you put your system out on the web under the URL of https api.codereviewvideos.com, then your entry point is going to be api.codereviewvideos.com. In other words, don't overthink it. But if you really do want to know more, then there's a link in the show notes to the Hydra spec. Essentially, the entry point tells your API consumer what's available on your API.